Hello everyone. Um, so in this lecture we are going to finish our discussion on uh, names and the environment. And uh, the last subsection is on scope rules. So let's start with considering uh, this uh, program here. We have a program that consists of the block A. So the, the block A starts with uh, uh, a declaration of an integer with the value or initialized with the value zero and it ends with a write statement and it also has nested statements or nested blocks uh, the, there's a block with the label b here that declares the the integer x and calls the phi function which is declared inside block a and the question here is which value will be printed um, and we might say there are actually two possibilities here. So let's consider or trace this program uh, starting from uh, uh, the block B. So notice that first we have a declaration of a function which uh, will not be executed unless we call the function explicitly. But here we have some statements inside block B and that these are the first statements that will be executed when we uh, execute the program apart from the initialization step here up uh, uh, the first initialization step so block B declares a variable with the name X and then calls the function phi what does phi do it gives the, va the variable x, the value 1. And immediately at this point, we, have, we should ask ourselves, what x is this here? Notice that x is not declared locally, so this is a non-local reference. And the question is, which x is it? Assuming that this x is um, the global, the, the one that is uh, declared up in, in uh, uh, block A, then when we say x equal to 1 inside phi, uh, we are actually given the x that is declared in block A, the value 1. So when we exit phi and write out the value of x as the last statement in block A, we might get 1 printed out because inside phi x, which is declared in block A, has been given the value 1. So when we write it out, we get the value 1. So this is obviously one possibility. Another possibility is that, notice that block B declares an x, its own local variable x, before it calls phi. So inside phi, when we are changing the value of x, we might actually be changing the value, the, the x value that is declared locally in B. So if we interpret the program this way, once we exit the function, the, 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 blo the block B, the, the variable X really goes out of scope. It's not live anymore. So when we write out the X finally as the last statement in block A, we are actually writing out the X that is alive at that point, which means it's the X that is declared up in, uh, at the start of block A. And that x has not been changed. It still has the value 0. So from this um, arguments, from these two arguments, we, we see that there is the possibility of writing out 1 or writing out 0. And it actually depends on what are called the scope rule, the scope rule being used. Uh, so we need definitely to talk about the scope rules. So, but before we do that, recall the visibility rule that we had talked about earlier. 
that a declaration local to a block is visible in that block and in all blocks listed within it. A declaration local to a block is visible in that block and in all blocks listed within it. So for example, when we declare a variable like x here, uh, this declaration is visible within the block. For example, when we write out the x here, uh, the x we are referring to is the x that is declared here inside block A. However, this does not specify whether the concept of nesting must be considered in a static that is based on the text of the program or in a dynamic way, meaning that is based on the flow of execution. So, if we look at this example here that we were considering, when inside this uh, fee function we have a declaration that is actually non-local it's uh, sorry we have a reference that is non-local we are referring to a variable x which is not declared locally inside the block uh, for fee we can consider the, the fee function as a, as, as a block uh, and the question is then do we uh, consider this nesting, this concept of nesting in a static way by looking at the program. When we look at the text of the program, we might consider that this x must be the x that is declared locally in the outer block. Or do we consider this in a dynamic fashion, meaning that it actually matters uh, the sequence of calls so inside phi, when we look at this non-local reference, there is this other possibility of referring to the x that was declared in the function that called our phi function. In that case, this x inside phi would be a reference to the x that is declared inside b. So there are two possibilities. Looking at it in a static way, based on the text of the program or in a dynamic way. So if we start with the, the static way, uh, so in that case it's called static scope, we say that in a language with static scope or lexical scope, the environment enforced at any point in the program and at any point during execution depends uniquely on the syntactic structure of the program itself. So such an environment can then be to determined completely by the compiler, hence the term static. Something that is static it, it happens at uh, compile time. So once again, if we go back to our example, when we look at this non-local reference inside the function phi and see x is equal to 1, uh, we consider the 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 what x we are faced with the question what x is it and we just by looking at the program in a static way as a compiler would do it must be the x that is declared in the outer block if it's not declared locally it must be declared in the outer block here we are not looking at the sequence of calls during execution, we're just looking at the sequence of, of the text in the program. And that's important, that this environment can be determined completely by the compiler. We don't have to consider what happens at execution. So if we go into a little bit more detail uh, regarding uh, uh, the definition of a static scope, we can say that the declaration local to a block define the local environment of that block. The local declarations of a block include only those present in the block and not those possibly present in blocks nested inside the block in question. So if we go uh, back 
uh, go back to the example we're saying for example that the the local declaration inside block B define the local environment here so this uh, variable x is uh, uh, its scope is inside this block here the scope of this variable is inside the block um, the second part here is talking about uh, names that are used inside a block and how we should associate them with declarations uh, if no association for the name exists in the local environment then the association existing in the enclosing block are considered this is what we actually talked about earlier for example inside the block for fee there is a uh, reference to variable x and it's not defined locally so what is the valid association what, to which declaration should we associate this reference x here well the rule says that we should uh, associate it with the enclosing block meaning in the block that encloses the, the current block so the block that encloses phi is block a so this reference to x must be the declaration uh, at the top of block A. Now the the rule also says that if we don't find it in the uh, mostly in, in the closely nested block then we might might have to search for the next block in question. So this search continues from the nearest block to the furthest block if during this search the outermost block is reached and it contains no association for the name then this association must be looked up in the language predefined environment if no association exists there there is an error so what does that this mean well if x is not declared in a then it might be declared in the block that encloses a which is in this example there is no block and if it's not found there, it might be one of the variables that are defined in the global environment. So, for example, imagine if x was a predefined function or something, then it is, it's part of the predefined environment. But it's, if it's not there and it is not part of the enclosing blocks, then we should get a compile time error. And the last thing here is that uh, uh, a block can be assigned a name like a function or procedure in which case the name is part of the local environment of the block which immediately uh, includes the block to which the name has been assigned to say this in, in other words for example we can define uh, as we do here the function phi and this name phi is then part of the local environment inside block A. That means, for example, that I can call phi uh, inside block A and I can even call phi inside block B because it is declared in block A. If it's declared in block A, it's accessible in all the blocks uh, that are nested within A. So this is that is scope uh, and the important part is that we can deduce the scope of the variables if we're using static scope just by looking at the program text. So let's take on another example here. Let's uh, look at this program. We have uh, in the outermost block we have uh, uh, int x is equal to zero this is a declaration of a variable and we also have a declaration of a function called phi then the very first executable statement in the outermost block is 
call a function call to the fee function with a variable three, uh, with a value three. Then we write out x, and then another block starts, which has its own copy of x, and it also calls v3 and then writes out x, and then we finally we write out x again. So let's trace this program and, this, and see what, what values we, we get as output. So the first executable statement is v with the value 3. So we call v, so the formal parameter n has the value 3 then, and then there's an assignment statement that says x is equal to n plus 1, basically meaning x is equal to 3 plus 1, so x is equal to 4. And then the question is, of course, what association should we use here? Which x is this? To which x does this refer to? Since we are using static scope, it's sufficient for us to look at the program text. So since we have a block, uh, an outer block that encloses the block for phi, and x is not declared locally inside phi, then x must be the one that is declared in the outer block. So the x that we refer to inside phi is the x that is declared in the outer block. Uh, so that x actually has the value 4 after the function call. So when we write out x here, we are writing out the value 4. What x is it? Well, x is actually, now we're outside the phi function, so this x must be the x that is declared inside the block in question. Then a new block starts, which declares the value x, and remember the, the variable x with the value 0, and remember when we declare a variable, that has the same name as a variable that is declared in outer block, then we're basically hiding the block, the, the variable in the outer block. So when we call phi3 now, um, and when I say when it's, when it's, when we are, that we are hiding the variable, it basically means that the variable x in the outer block is not accessible in the inner block. So, but we're still calling the, the function phi with a value 3. And again, uh, the formal parameter, parameter n has the value 3, so x is equal to 3 plus 1, so x is equal to 4. Um, but what x is, it, x is it? Well, it's the x in the outer block. So again, we have x equal to 4. But then we, when we come back from the function call, we write out x again. And what x it, is it? Well, it's not the x in the outer block, because that one is hidden by the local declaration. So when we write out x here, we are writing out the value 0. And then finally, when we write out x as, 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 the, as the last step in the program, we are definitely writing out the x that is declared in the block in question. Because the x that is declared locally inside the the, the inner block is not accessible anymore, it's not alive, it's, it has gone out of scope. So we get the value 4 here. So what this program does is it starts with writing out the value 4, then it writes out the value 0, and then finally it writes again out the value 4. So what are the... and notice what we have been talking about here, static scope, is actually the scope that that uh, most programmers know. This is the default scope rule that is used in programming languages, in, mo in most programming languages actually, languages like C, C++, Java, Pascal, Fortran, and so on. So what are the advantages here? Well, the programmer has a good understanding of the program as far as he or she can connect every occurrence of a name to its correct declaration just by looking at the textual structure of the program. We don't have to simulate, simulate what happens at execution. We just look at the program in question. When we see a statement or reference to a variable, we can deduce from the syntactic structure of the program itself what x refers to. Does it refer to a 
uh, declaration or variable that is uh, declared locally in the block or does it refer to a declaration that is in an outer block like is the case for this right x statement here and since we can just look at the texture structure of the program then this connection can also be made, uh, be made by the compiler and therefore the compiler can determine each and every use of a name. It can determine the association between a reference of a name to its declaration. And therefore this makes it possible at compile time to perform a great number of checks, uh, like type checks, uh, using the information. And as I said earlier, most current languages actually use some form of uh, static scope. 